Now we've created the horizontal geometry, we can proceed with the vertical geometry. To conduct the vertical geometry, we'll need to use the section view to profile the super alignment we've just assigned horizontal geometry to. I'll select the LS section view from the view tabs and use the view controls to move this view to the right hand side of the screen. Now the section view has a few icons that the plan view doesn't. The first is this 10x button, which controls the vertical exaggeration of the view. The one next to that, the wavy icon, is used to profile strings. And the left and right arrows are used to cycle through multiple strings on a model. But we'll get to those later when dealing with our cross sections. So I'll select the wavy profile icon then left click and accept on the super alignment that we created in the plan view. Now because we haven't created any vertical geometry yet, nothing will show in the section view. We need to add the ground tin to the view so that we can see how the existing surface undulates along the horizontal alignment to inform how we design the vertical geometry. So I'll select add and add tin ground We'll also add the model's survey road so that we can see in the section view the extents of the stub road vertical geometry. I'll need to run a view fit and then we can see those models there. Now we'd also like to add a grid to the section view so we can appreciate the elevation changes along the road. So we'll select the properties icon. Then under the Grids node, select the drop-down menu and select Draw Grids first on view. What this means is that the grid is drawn first, then the data on in the view is drawn second. This means the data sits in front of the grid, so if the data and the grid overlap, we'll see the data rather than the grid. You can see the grid has been created there, and we'll just make a couple of changes to the grid to make it a bit more effective. I'll change the grid X to 50 and the grid Y to 5. And you can see that grid has been created. You can customize your grid however you prefer. Uh, I'll finish this panel. Then to add vertical intersection points or VIPs, we'll use the same first icon on the super alignment edit toolbar add remove IPs. So we'll hold that icon down, then select the second icon, append VIP, or vertical intersection point. After we select that, you'll see in the section view that we get a small VIP1 label being generated. So we can select the first VIP location within the section view. So we'll pick the start of the stub road on the model survey road, and to do this, I'll left click slightly to the left of change zero. And the cursor will snap forward onto the start of the stub road at change zero with that diamond vertex snap. So then middle mouse click to accept, which will place the first VIP. Then for the second VIP, We'll pick the end of the stub road, which you can see is where the dark gray line in the section view ends. So I'll left click until I snap to the end of the survey road string, which is that one there. And then middle mouse click to accept, which places the second VIP. The next couple of VIPs we'll be placing will be like we did with the horizontal IP locations, except this time based on a change and height location rather than an X and a Y coordinate location. So when placing this third VIP, I'll just start typing and type in 412. You can see this typed input panel is for placing a VIP at a specific change and height. Uh, so select space then add 49.667 and enter. That'll place VIP number three, which you can see there. 
Then for the fourth VIP, again, start typing and type in 600 space 66.333 and enter. For the fifth VIP, we'll pick the start of the stub road toward the end of the alignment. So I'll zoom in and left click until we get the vertex at the end of the string on the survey road model, which is that one there, and then accept. Then for the sixth and final VIP, we'll pick the end of the stub road in the section view. So to do that, I'll pick to the right of the end of the road, which will snap back on to the end of the road, and then accept, which will place the sixth VIP. Then because we don't want to place a seventh VIP, we'll press escape to end the adding of VIPs. We'll look at some other options now to add in new VIPs based on the location of existing VIPs. And the first one we'll look at is insert VIP grade. This can be found under the first icon on the super alignment edit toolbar. And select the sixth icon down, insert VIP grade. And this is the panel that we get. So this option will create a new VIP at a certain distance and grade from an existing VIP. We'll type in the start VIP as VIP number two. So we'll be starting from here. And we'll continue the existing grade from VIP number one to VIP number two. So I'll type in that negative 0.679%. And type in a distance value of 40 meters. Then select insert, and that will place a new VIP number three, 40 meters down the road from VIP number two. And we can close this panel. The next feature I'll show is intersect VIP grade, which is one below the insert VIP grade that we just used. So this one, intersect VIP grades, and this is the panel we get. So this feature will calculate the change and height location of a new VIP given the desired intersecting grades from two existing VIPs. I'll fill this out to insert a point between VIP number five and VIP number six. With intersecting grades of minus 5% from VIP number five, and maintaining the same grade between existing VIPs six and seven. So I'll change the mode of the second grade to VIP number and enter an NVIP of seven and select insert. And a new VIP number six will be created. You can see at the intersection of minus 5% from VIP number five, and maintaining the 1.559% between what were VIPs six and seven, which are now VIPs seven and eight. We'll finish that panel. And now we have a couple of VIPs, uh, VIP number two and VIP number seven, which are unnecessary because there is the same grade on approach as there is on departure. So to delete these two VIPs, we'll again hold down the first icon on the super alignment edit toolbar, then pick the last icon, delete. We'll then left click and accept on these two VIPs. Then escape to exit out of the delete feature. Okay, and all we're left to do now is to add in the vertical curves. So I'll use the same option we used to add the horizontal curves, which is holding down the move edit icon and then selecting change curve. Then I'll pick VIP number two and accept. And we get prompted for a length of vertical curve. Now the length that is required for a vertical curve will be based on the speed limit of the road, 
the grade change across that vertical curve and the authority that you're designing the road for. You'll need to calculate this, um, but we're just showing how to add these curves. So I'll input a length of 50 meters at BIP number two and enter. Uh, 150 meters at VIP number three. Two hundred meters at VIP number four, and one hundred meters at VIP number five. Then escape to exit the change curve feature. So that's the vertical geometry complete. Uh, the last feature we'll go through in this video is the info panel. So on the super alignment edit toolbar we'll directly select the info icon, which is this one here. And that brings up the super alignment info panel. And we can see that when we move our cursor over the plan view along the super alignment, various information about the super alignment is reported in this information table. If I move this info panel out of the way, you'll also see that as we move our cursor through the plan view, that we see a cursor moving through the section view as well. This works vice versa as well. So when we move the cursor uh, along in the section view, we get the information updating in the information panel and we can see a small cursor moving through the plan view. So using these uh, synchronized cursors and synchronized views, at all times we know exactly where we are designing in both the plan and section views. Uh, we'll close that info panel. And we finish the design of the super alignment reference string. So we can save and close the super alignment edit panel. So I'll click the tick, then select yes. And if we ever want to edit this super alignment again, you can select strings editor, then pick and accept on the center line. Uh, or to open this edit string panel, because this is a frequently used feature, you can use the hotkey F6. That will bring up the edit string panel. Then we can pick and accept the super alignment, either in the plan or the section or the perspective view. And that will bring up the super alignment edit toolbar. And I'll just close this one because we've finished editing the string.